Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, I thought I would talk to you guys about Brabus. Because uh, we're here in the greenhouse today, and we're looking at some trees that have woken up with the help of our space heater, with the help of the sun that's coming in, and really warming up this greenhouse. Um, you can see right here in front of you guys is actually some Brabus that are forming on this particular tree. Uh, we have here actually on the left is a new Braba, a new fig. And on the right is a new branch. This is also the apical bud, which will also form a new branch. So those will be our new branches for the year. And I guess a Braba by definition is any fig that is formed on last year's growth. So if it's forming on this new green growth that's gonna come out of this new branch here and this apical bud, that is not a Braba. That is technically the main crop. And that takes a bit longer to form because you can see the tree is just waking up at the first day of its season and is already swelling to put out some fruits for us. So this is why a lot of us in like the Pacific Northwest and England value these Brabas because they put out a very early crop of the year. In fact, 90 days from today, this fig will be ripe. We're almost in uh, March 1st here. So what this means is that by June 1st, I should have some ripe Braba. Um, now for me here in this climate, I don't necessarily go after Brabas. Um, I don't think they're really all that tasty. It does extend the season for me, um, but Brabas just don't do a whole uh, very well here as a whole. Uh, it's too, you know, too much temperature fluctuations in my spring. And as a result, if the temperature really fluctuates, the Brabas will drop off the tree. So if you live in a more mild place like England or the Pacific Northwest that don't have those temperature fluctuations, the Brabas stay on the trees and are able to put out a full crop that way. And it's therefore a pretty reasonable thing to expect and do in those climates. Here, like I said, it's just not something that I go for. So what I do is I actually come in here, guys, and I'm, I've been evaluating which of these trees, which of these varieties have Braba on them. And I'm actually either keeping them or I'm taking them off. And on this particular variety, this is a, a Coldedon Blanc that I have that I think is about, I don't know, three years old now, if I had to guess. And you can see there's a lot of Brabas, even that you can see on the last year's growth haven't necessarily come out yet. They haven't started to swell. They may never swell, to be honest with you, but there's a lot of Brabas here that could potentially form, but I know that Coldenon Blanc is not a variety that ever holds on to its Braba. It kind of psychs you out. It forms the Brabas, looks like you're gonna get a Braba crop, and then it never does. Um, it ends up dropping off anyway. So what I'm gonna do is actually come in here with my thumb and take these Brabas off. And I'm just going to go around to basically every tree that has these Brabas on here. And I'm just knocking them off. I'm going to zoom in for this one here. You can see there's one right there that we're taking off. And again, there's one up here and one up here. Uh, it's actually, I think, this closer one to me. Yep. And... Uh, that I think is just gonna divert the energy to where it should be going right now, which is into the branches. I don't wanna have a Braba crop that's never gonna form. That just seems like wasted energy, right? Um, now, there's also a case that could be made for different varieties. Like let's say over here, we have some uh, a Braba that's formed right here. This is Del San Wami Gran. And this is more of a mid to late season variety. I would expect it to be on the later side. Uh, and for me, if it's producing a Braba, which of course it's not really supposed to produce a Braba. If you look at the information that's available on Delson Wami Gran and Pons' book, he says it doesn't produce Braba, yet it's producing Braba. This of course can happen. You never know, it might be like Col de Don Blanc. It may produce the Braba and then it might fall off in about 30 days from now. Um, it just seems like a waste of energy if that's the case. However, let's say the Braba does produce. Well, if it's not really known to be a great Braba producer, like I'm gonna show you in a minute here, I have some Villette de Bordeaux 
that has about 20 or more Breva on it. Um, if it's not known to have that, that quantity and also known to have that quality, right? Then what's the point? I'm gonna ripen this Del San Wami Gran 90 days from now. And yeah, it's a fig, but it's a pretty weak fig. It doesn't taste all that great. It's a Breva. Uh, it doesn't have that sugar. It doesn't have that heat. It doesn't have that daylight. So I'm expecting for myself really to not have the highest quality fruit, even if that does ripen, even if it does hold on. To me, it seems like there's no use. On top of that, this is a mid to late season variety as I was getting to. So this Breva crop, if it does ripen, is only going to delay the main crop by about two weeks. So we don't want that to happen. I'd rather have all this energy be focused into these new branches here that are coming out of the tree. And if all that energy is going into the right places in these two new branches, I should have an earlier main crop by about two weeks, as I mentioned. So for me, I really value the main crop of Del San Wami Gran. I don't value the Brava crop of Del San Wami Gran, although I've never tried it. So what I'm gonna do is actually take this one off, just like the other variety of the, the cold adams that I was showing you guys. And it's weird, a lot of the cold adams are doing that. Like here's another cold adam blanc up here. So we're just knocking that off. And it's really, to me, not the end of the world. There's some more Del San Wami Gran over here that has some Breva. We're gonna knock these off. This is actually four or five Breva on this one. Um, a similar thing with my Capole Kurt Negra back in here. Not supposed to be a, be a Breva producer in Ponza's book. Yes, I'm sure it could produce some Breva. Here's another one. Uh, there's about five or six on the Del San Juan Migran, I think. Nah, less than that, maybe about four. Um, so it's kind of like giving, giving me some false signals here. What is interesting is I have my Coldedon Blanca Negra here, which is supposed to be the legitimate Coldedon Blanca Negra, which produces white and dark Coldedon figs on the same tree, on the same branch, um, yet it's producing Brava. And I see about four of them here, uh, actually five of them here. So what this means to me, again, this is a cold adam. They're not gonna hold on to their Breva. However, I did this last year, they did hold on to their Breva. And I think because there's so many of them that I may end up keeping some of these, but at the same time, the quality of the Breva is not going to be all that great. So I'm gonna knock these off. There's just absolutely no use for these. And I'm just coming in here again, very sad. I'm sure some of you are, but if this isn't a quality fruit, to me, it's not worth it. We have another variety here, Sefeño Preto. I don't know if that's gonna produce Breva. We have another variety over here called Raven de Calci. I don't know if that holds on to its Breva. So some of this is a bit of an experiment to see. We have the Daloso, which is putting out about two Breva. The big winner and always the winner is going to be the Violet de Bordeaux. And you can see all up and down these branches, you'll see these little protruding pieces here. These are figs, these are Bravas. And if I count the number of them, there's close to 20 of them on this four, actually I think it's a five year old Violet de Bordeaux that I have now. This is one of the first trees I ever got. And it just really does have even some Brava up there um, quite a bit on this, this older tree. So excited to see that. And the, the nice difference between the Violet de Bordeaux and the Del San Juan Migran is that the Violet de Bordeaux and the, and the Col de Dames and all these other varieties that I was taking off the Brabas off of is that this one's meant to do this. This is a heavy Braba producer and the fruit quality of the Braba rivals the main crop. They also don't fall off nearly as easily. They're not, it seems like, as subject to those big temperature swings in our spring that end up making them fall off anyway. Um, it's just a high quality fruit. Plus, the variety itself of Villette de Bordeaux is a mid-season variety, it reliably ripens here every single year. Um, to me, that means that I can afford to have a two week later main crop season because this variety is mid season. Whereas the Del San Juan Migran, I have some Bravas over there on Victoria 
and the Capole Curt Negra and the Coldedom figs, you know, these all are just not going to produce early enough with this Brava crop. I value the main crop to give you a little bit of, you know, a little bit of more perspective here because I don't think I'm driving my point home enough is that we've got myself a really old, like a six or seven year old Coldedon Blanc here. This Coldedon Blanc, if it focuses all of its energy into these new shoots here, instead of some of these Brabas that are forming up here, you can see there's one right here and there's one up in here. I'm just knocking them off. They're very, very small. But if all that energy goes in the right places, I could be looking at 50 to 75 to 100 fruits on this particular Coldenon Blanc. And the beauty of that is that this is an incredibly tasty variety. You know, um, why would I waste some time and delay that fruiting, this main crop, to get myself one or two or three or four Bravas? It doesn't make sense. It does make more sense with these Violette de Bardos. Or if you have something like a San Pedro, and that's the other difference here is that a lot of you guys maybe in the Pacific Northwest or England or even in warmer climates that don't have these fluctuations in your spring, you may really value the Brava crop. And you may have specific varieties that are San Pedro types. So these I have in the, in the greenhouse are all common, meaning that they produce a Brava and the main crop without pollination. There are some varieties that are San Pedro's. The most common and popular of them all is the Desert King. In Italy, it's called Petrelli. Um, that fig is all over the world, all over the country. Um, and that is a San Pedro type that requires pollination of the main crop. However, the Brabas do not require pollination. So it's an interesting phenomenon how that works. But, um, None of these figs are being pollinated by the Blastophaga or the fig wasp. So if you have the San Pedro variety and you don't have that wasp, you're only gonna get the Brava. And that's what a lot of people do is because it puts out a pretty reliable crop and an abundant crop of Brava that then ripens earlier in the season by about two weeks earlier than the main crop varieties. That's another point I wanna make. And therefore you guys are able to grow successfully some varieties in your very cool and mild and short season climates than you otherwise wouldn't. So there's a big distinction there. Now, the reason why I also don't really value Brabas all that much, because I have varieties right here, like Ron de Bordeaux, and I have varieties right here, like Azores Dark and Campaneri, and other very early varieties that produce main crop in this greenhouse only two weeks later than these Brabas are. So you're gonna see in about two weeks from now, or three weeks from now, these new branches are gonna come out of this particular tree, and they're gonna be forming figs very, very soon that are then gonna ripen 90 days after that point, or two weeks after we have some Brabas forming on our trees here. Here's another Braba that I missed. And that's all I'm doing, guys. I'm going around my trees, and I'm looking for these Brabas that just shouldn't be, I'm evaluating what has quite a few Brabas on it, like this Sucret variety right here has a few Brabas on it that I'll probably let, uh, let it keep. And also these some varieties in here which I didn't even know had Brabas on them, like Cephania Preto and Raven de Calci. The information's not known, so we'll see what are these things going to do. Here's another one with about seven or eight Braba on it is the uh, GM172 fig. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's about six, maybe seven Bravas on this one. There's a seventh down here. So you never know. We can learn something here. I don't want to take off every single Brava. I think it's making some of you guys probably cringe at this point, but you know, that's not necessarily what I go for here in this climate for the reasons that I've mentioned. So I wanna thank you guys all for watching this video. We'll talk to everybody soon. Stay tuned, all right? Check us out on Fig Boss, Facebook and Instagram. We'll see you guys for tomorrow's video. Take care, everybody.